This is Design Review 2 for Team 209, and this is the poster we prepared. Our horizontal mover we chose was a gondola to move people from place to place, possibly across the valley connecting to towns, so um, similar types of um, orientations like that. And our requirements we have here, four of them, the ones in green, we are able to verify using our different simulations. We used AIMSIN, Motion View, and Finite Element Analysis for this. Our lifespan, we verified using the Goodman diagrams and fatigue analysis. Um, the design factor, we use, we verified using our FEA. And the max um, acceleration and max allowable stress, we verified using our AIMSIN. Uh, we found that we were not able to meet our desired uh, power consumption. Um, our AIMSIN indicated that we were using too high of a power for what we'd set. And the accessibility of our controls, we were also unable to verify because our uh, simulations were more focused on the physical movement of the gondola and the stresses that it was under as opposed to um, the actual control system of the gondola. The first method of analysis our team used was an Ameson model. The Ameson model consisted of a mass rope and sheet system, a gearbox, a DC motor, and a PID control loop. For the mass and sheet system, the mass represents the gondola car and also has a displacement sensor attached to it. This displacement sensor provides the feedback loop in the PID loop. Also fed into the PID loop is our duty cycle. The mass is required to move to three different positions over a period of 90 seconds making a stop at each position. When running through this model, a velocity versus time graph was created for the mass, which was then uh, exported to the HyperWorks motion analysis to create the displacement versus time graph. Two elements of realism that were included in this model are the DC motor and the gearbox. These helped us get a more accurate analysis of the power requirements of the system, which, as stated before, were not met. The next method of analysis that we conducted was a HyperWorks motion view analysis. So this was conducted by first modeling a belt and pulley system in motion view, and then importing the CAD model that we created and attaching it to one belt on the pulley system. We then imported the duty cycle from the Amason model and applied it to the pulley so that it would have the same motion as the Amason. Then when we ran the simulation, we were able to determine the displacement versus time of the gondola and the force versus time that the gondola experiences due to the acceleration from the pulleys. We were able to figure out that the force versus time was negligible when compared to the overall weight of the gondola. Because we figured out that the force versus time was negligible just for motion, when we moved on to the FEA analysis, we only had to consider the weight of the gondola. So the first thing in the FEA analysis that we had to do was identify the critical component, and this is the component most likely to fail. We determined that on the gondola, the critical component was the neck piece between the car of the gondola and the rollers that, the, that would roll across the belt or the cable. This is because this had the smallest cross-sectional area on the whole gondola. We then in the model applied a 5 kilonewton force downward on the bottom of the gondola car. This was because of the maximum weight or found by just taking the maximum weight of the gondola. And then we fixed the rollers on top in place. When we ran the simulation then, we got the results of the stress concentration shown in those two images there. This gave us the result that the highest maximum stress that would be experienced in the gondola was 233 megapascals. This was a little bit on, or a little ways under the maximum stress allowable of 400 megapascals. So thus, this verified the design requirement for the factor of safety. The final method of analysis our team conducted was a fatigue analysis. This comprised 
term is composed of creating an SN curve and a Goodman diagram, which can be seen here. The parameters used to create the Goodman diagram were the maximum stress that was seen in the HyperWorks finite element analysis, that being 230 megapascals, and a load factor in gradient of one. These were chosen due to the relatively large cross-sectional area of our critical component. We also had a minimum uh, stress of zero due to the single directional loading of the critical component. We don't expect any reverse loading because the way of the gondola is always pulling in one direction, no matter which way the gondola is moving. All of these parameters created this Goodman diagram, where you can see the load line is below both the Goodman line and the, the yield line, meaning that the element will not fail due to fatigue. In conclusion, we can bring all these analyses together to show that our that our requirements to do with safety were verified and that the model is effective and can work. For future improvements, we would like to reduce stress concentrations in the neck or critical component, where you can see a stress concentration where the neck meets the pulley. This can be done using larger radiuses and a geometry that more effectively distributes the load. We would also like to adjust our power consumption requirements because the initial goal we set for ourselves was unrealistic.